Hello everyone and welcome to It Goes Off. We've had 11 rounds of NBL basketball and we're starting to get into the Christmas spirit of things and unfortunately my regular co-host Grant Lee Bernard is just getting into a little bit of Christmas cheer. So we've brought in a superstar replacement, Peter Crawford, the superstar from the Townsville Crocs, coming off a very tough loss on the weekend. Yeah, it's a very disappointing game. It would have been a good one to get the win, but it was not to be. Well, PC, you're probably familiar with our work here on It Goes Off, and uh, I think we should almost have a picture of you of It Goes Off because you were going off against the Melbourne Tigers, a perfect 5-5 five five from the three-point line in that third quarter, a sensational shooting display. Yeah, um, you know, it's uh, something a few of us have been working on after training. You know, we've got a couple of drills where you've you got to make consecutive shots in a row to uh, advance to the next spot, so uh, it was good to actually... Um, have that come off in a game instead of just at training. So it's definitely something we practice, but um, you know, didn't get the results. So it's a little, uh, little anticlimactic. Well, I'm not sure if you're familiar with our work here, but we have a, uh, a segment called the 24 Second Shot Challenge, which we're going to get into a, a little bit later, uh, later on in the program. So there's some of the, the some of the training drills I'm sure you do at practice as well. But we've got a very big show to get through. We've got the Mark Zuckerberg. Are you familiar with it? Yeah, on? yeah. I've watched a few episodes. I'm familiar with the with the sh- with the show and how it goes down. Yeah. Well, very very keen to get your thoughts on uh, some of the goings on in the NBL. Well, PC, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the work that uh, took place on Saturday night with the Perth Wildcats and the Gold Coast Blaze. You were probably tucked into bed getting ready for the big clash on Sunday. Yeah. But there was an unfortunate incident to, to Matty Knight. He went down and uh, sustained a, 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 what appeared to be a very serious neck injury. Now, the news is quite good that he's going to be able to make a recovery. But he's having a very good season for the Perth Wildcats. And, and he is a, a pivotal component to, to uh, what they're doing. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think last year when we played them, he got knocked out in one of our games as well. So uh, it's two times in two years. So, but uh, you know, he's a big part of Perth, and if he can stay injury free, that's uh, huge for them. And, and just give us your thoughts on the Gold Coast Blaze because they've had a bit of a topsy turvy type season. Started off a little shaky, then got on a, a roll, lost the, the the last couple, and then at home against the Wildcats, they trailed it by as many as twenty one points in the first half, and were able to come back. How do you see the uh, the Gold Coast plays this season? Um, I think uh, you know they've had a few injuries in that and uh, brought a few in, few new imports in, so it takes a while to uh, you know get, feel the rotations out. But uh, you know that, that's the way Gold Coast play as well. They uh, they're uh, you know a run and gun sort of team. They can get real hot real quick and they can get hold cold quick as well. So mm. they can let you come in and they can also blow you out. So that's uh, it's not surprising that something like that happened with the uh, with the Blaze. And Adrice Dillion, you saw him firsthand a couple of weeks ago, explosively quick to the basket. He's, uh, he's had an impact since coming into the, in the competition. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, it took him a little while to warm up, but now he's uh, found his groove and uh, he's definitely hard to stop. And if they can keep getting good numbers out of him, that's going to make it easier for, uh, you know, Wertho and Gibbo and Harves and the rest mm. of the guys. And the Melbourne Tigers PC, you saw him firsthand on Sunday, uh, Sunday evening. Great to see uh, the sold out sign hanging at uh, the cage, but they'd lost five out of their last six and just shown some vulnerability since Paddy Mills has, has left the team. Where do, how do you see their going at this point in time? Um, you know, uh, Paddy was such a big part of, uh, of their group, so it was going to take a little while for him to, to figure out how to fill that hole. You know, uh, he had the ball in his hands a lot and he was scoring a lot of points. So, you know, when someone like that leaves, it, it takes a little while. And, uh, you know, they had a few road games as well, which are hard to win. So, you know, I think they came out with a, a higher energy level and, uh, you know, were more, more determined to get the win uh, last night. So... You know, it's, uh, I think a few teams go through it. They need to put a whole game together, and, uh, you know, they did that last night. And Cameron Tregar, he's leading the league in scoring again against you guys. He put up some very, very good numbers. He's, um, he's having probably his best season since a couple of years ago when he was with the Wollongong Hawks. And, and down low, he is a beast. Yeah, um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give Cam, Cam Tregar some love. Uh, yeah. You know, he's uh, leading the league in scoring. We, we played together, uh, you know, we came off the bench in Townsville together a long time ago. But, uh, you know, one thing we have to say about Tregar is that he, mm. get, he gets a bad rap for not being a very good defensive player. Mm. But, uh, you know, I had a little chat to him last night after the game. He is putting the runs on the board, you know. He, uh, you know, he, he kept, a, kept his opposition points down low and he's, uh, you know, he's given it to... 
whoever's guarding him at the moment, he's unstoppable. So, you know, uh, give him a wrap. His defense is getting better, mm. and uh, you know, uh, you know, he's a bit upset that he, he's kicked, been labelled with that poor defender tag. But hey, uh, no, hey, nothing wrong with that. Some great players, <laughs> some really good players have been labelled. Oh with that yeah, poor I'm sure he's, tag. Uh, you know. <laughs> Put his game around uh, some ex-players that used to play for the Tigers, but <laughs> no. I tell you what, he is not looking. He's not looking all that uh, sharp at the moment. I mean, he's a, a modest-looking bloke at the best of times, but he had the broken nose. And good to his credit, he, he came out and playing with a broken nose is no easy task. But he had the black eyes. He he, he didn't look all that sharp. Yeah, I think uh, was it Waxy that gave it to him. So maybe <laughs> uh, maybe Waxy thought he needed a bit more love than uh, than Trigger, but. Uh, you know, he had a good game last night and uh, he's tough down in the post there and he's probably one of the guys in the NBL that uh, has got all them low post moves. There's and, not a whole lot of them. And just on the, the, the Townsville Crocs, uh, Paul Warpit, you've got a new coach come in. How is he, what are the differences been between him and, and Trevor this season? Um, well, they, uh, you know, Trev was Paul's assistant for a mm. while and then Paul was Trev's assistant last year. So uh, there's a lot of similarities between the two, but, mm. um, you know, Paul... Paul is, uh, you know, very, he's been a coach for a long time and he knows what he's doing. And, uh, you know, I don't think he, he panics too much when, uh, you know, his stuff isn't working. Mm. He, he sticks to his systems and that. And uh, it, it's been good fun playing under Paul. Well, uh, the, uh, lastly, uh, the Wollongong Hawks. There's a lot of going to be, a lot of changing in the top four. We've seen in the last couple of weeks, teams coming in and out, yourselves being one of them. It's really going to be a tight race, but you'd have to say the Wollongong Hawks probably uh, well and truly out of the mix. They're three and nine at this point in time and uh, they're lost to the Adelaide 36ers who are without Ballinger, without Crosswell. Yeah. Really it's on the road, but uh, they look like they're going through some difficulties. Yeah, um, you know, uh, they, they are struggling at the moment. They've got a, a few old guys mixed with a few young guys and uh, you know, they're probably struggling to find their groove a little bit and you know, their imports are, are up and down as well. So, you know, consistency is what they need to find. And I think, uh, you know, Sav is, is the leader of that group and uh, it is hard to lead when, uh, you know, you're not playing up to your own standard and uh, he's probably feeling that a little bit, but um, you know, Maybe they're in a building year. Well, what? Well, well, that's the thing. With you got Matty Campbell and Glenn Savile, as you mentioned, the leaders have been unbelievable contributors to the Hawks and the league. Do you think that maybe? I guess you always say this with older guys that teams are struggling. Are they coming to the end of the road? Um, I don't think so. Uh, you know, they've they've got a good mix. Um, you know, sometimes there's that battle between the young guys and the old dogs, and uh, you know, you have to find the good mix, and uh, you know. Winning cures everything. A couple mm. of wins, and all of a sudden they could go on a tear. You know, uh, they did that a couple of times last year and uh, in years in the past. Did they just have to find their groove? Well, let's hope they do because they're going through some tough times at the moment, and uh, the Hawks fans are desperately hoping they can get their season back on track. PC, we have a segment that we call <laughs> "Who's Hot and Who's Not," and we're going to spare you the uh, difficulty of, to going through the, the, the perhaps some of the, the lesser performances in the competition, but. Yeah, if any hot performance outside of your very own scintillating work against the Melbourne Tigers, anything else uh, caught you caught your eye as far as hot performances? Um, well, uh, there are a few uh, few other things apart from the NBL. I saw Ricky Lee on the cover of Lovely. Esquire. Lovely. You know, Benny Allen um, made me aware of that. She, she's looking very hot at the moment. She is. Um, Merry Christmas to Ricky. Yeah, well done. You're looking, <laughs> looking fit. Uh, Flo Rider came to Townsville. There you have it. We don't get a whole lot of gigs. I but, wouldn't uh, have thought so. You know, he's pretty hot in Townsville right really? now. Really? Flo Rider doing some work. Yeah. It's what's... Uh, what's yeah, I'm showing my age a bit here. I've heard of Flo Rider. What's some oh, of his work? You should have been there. Sometimes you get a good feeling is, uh, you know, a bit of a team song for us right okay. now. Okay. So, uh, you know, it was, uh, that was a good night. Uh, and, and, anything catch your eye in the basketball? Oh, right? okay, the basketball. Yep. Yeah. No, uh, Daryl Corletto, he's, mm. uh, he's playing real well for uh, New Zealand at the moment. You Isn't know, he? He's, uh, you know, just uh, getting it done. Mm. Uh, I think they've got a good system and it's, suited him perfectly. A career high 26 points on the weekend and uh, that, that move from the Melbourne Tigers to him at the time it seemed like it was going to be a, a tough one but uh, it's worked. It's been a blessing in disguise for Daryl Coletto. He's been fantastic. Yeah, clearly the shuffle was holding him back. 
<laughs> the system <laughs> holding him back. So, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, also, uh, Tommy Gree in your game, he was hot. Yeah, um, you know, he came out and, uh, you know, he was probably the, the energy and the enthusiasm guy for, for the Tigers and that was probably the difference, you know. Uh, I think he'd hit six threes all season mm. so far and he hit three or four in that game. So, you know, that, that really hurt us, him having 18 points and uh, shooting at a good clip and he was really determined to uh, make sure the Tigers didn't lose. Mm. Well, in the previous five games, he was just one of 21 from the field. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure he, he may not have figured all yeah, that prominently in your uh, scouting report. But uh, he bounced back, and uh, the New Zealand Breakers, five-game winning streak. We all thought, or I thought, that they'd fall off a little bit, given Kirk Penny uh, not going to be with them this season. He's taken his skills to, uh, to Spain, but they just really haven't missed a beat. No, and, uh, you know, I think Daz is probably a, you know, a good reason for that, too. He, he's slipped in and, you know, probably not at the same level yeah. as Kirk, but, uh, you know, just as efficient and, uh, you know... They're, they're an efficient team mm. right now and, uh, you know, they're, they're tough to beat at home and, uh, you know, five-game win strings aren't easy to come mm. by and uh, they've strung one together. Well, that's true and, uh, you know, I think that, that Cedric Jackson has also been a very significant contributor to the uh, yeah. New Zealand Breakers. He's been fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're, they're some of the hots, but now let's tuck on it. This is usually Grantley Bernard's uh, domain, but uh, I'm going to hit it this week. No, you don't like to be negative, Drewy. I, 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 do I do not appreciate like, that. like to be negative, too, see. But uh, some of the lesser performance, the Wollongong Hawks, and I'm sorry to say not hot at this point in time, three and nine on the season. They've lost their last uh, four in a row. And just not at the fact that they're losing, they're, they're starting to cop a little bit of a touch-up along the way. And against the Adelaide 36ers, who are undermanned, we've spoken just already about them, but uh, can you see in any way they can get this uh, season back on track? Oh, I've, I've ruled them out of being able to make the playoffs. Um, I was once on a team that was 3-11 and and we turned it around, but, um, you know... Uh, there's also losing and, mm. you know, there's two different types of losing and losing mm. that, that poorly really makes a team struggle mm. in the sense of, uh, you know, having confidence in their own, their own style and their own system. And, you know, if they, uh, you know, they've been renowned for looking after home mm. court and, you know, lately that hasn't been the fortress it has been. No. And, uh, you know, if you want to be successful in the league, you have to make sure you win at home. Wow, there it is. PC also ruled out the Wollongong Hawks. Uh, <laughs> the Perth Wildcats. Fair enough. I'll rule out everyone except for the Crocodiles. <laughs> the Perth Wildcats, they were not hot in the last quarter. Now, I can't comprehend how a team can play 10 minutes of basketball and only score seven points. You guys had a similar uh, display against the Melbourne Tigers in the second quarter. How is it that your teams can go on these scoring droughts? Now, do we credit the defence or is it just the, the offence just goes a little bit wayward? No, I think uh, the offence goes a little bit wayward, uh, you know, especially, you know, you've got a, you've got free, free flowing offences mm. like Perth and a lot of teams have, uh, you know, it's not like back in the day when mm. you can go to, a, you know, the trusty guy that averages 35 and go here, we need a bucket, you know, uh, you know, I think you have to be aware of what's going on on the scoreboard and which way the momentum's going and, and have a play or one or two plays mm. that are going to get you good looks. Well, another man that uh, is no longer all that hot, and sorry to say, it's one of your teammates in Eddie Gill. So I'm not sure what he was doing. Must not have had a good night's sleep on Saturday night because he had uncharacteristic sloppy with the ball, eight turnovers, and some of them, I mean, they weren't even close. I mean, he was throwing them into the stands. Just one of those games for Eddie? Yeah, I think it was just one of those games. Uh, you know, he did mention it was a new ball, but, uh, you know, I've... I've been shooting with the new ball now for two weeks, so maybe we need to get rid of them old balls out of the ball bag and bring in the new ones so uh, he gets used to them. But, yeah, very uncharacteristic for him. He's a, you know, a solid point guard that, um, you know, had, had an off night. And, uh, you know, that was maybe if, uh, you know, he plays a little bit better, that, that's a W for mm. us. So, mm. uh, you know, we rely heavily on him and I, I think he'll bounce back. Well, he hasn't been shooting the ball well uh, on the floor all season, but he brings so much to the team. I've been impressed with his leadership and, and yourself. I actually, during the commentary, commented that uh, he's provided some real good looks for you this season. Yeah, I think, um, you know, uh, when, when we, we've got a new group, mm. two new imports. You know, we lost Russ and Sench early. Mm. And I sense he's come back. It's his second game. Uh, we brought Jake in and, and a couple of young guys as well. 
takes a little while to get that rhythm and, and that confidence and playing with each other. Mm. So, you know, we're a third way in now, so we're getting a bit bit more of a, you know, a combination there and uh, it helps when you knock down shots. My word, it does. And uh, speaking of knock down, knocking down shots, uh, we have a segment on this program called the 24 Second Shot Challenge. Did you catch the work? of Darren Ning a Ninja. couple of weeks. He had a world record 16 in a row. I don't know whether that can be beaten because he got them off very quickly. Uh, I didn't, I haven't actually seen that, but I, I saw the uh, the Cairns guys and the Sydney guys do it and they, they struggled. But uh, yeah, I have to watch and see how Ninja, Ninja's form is. Well, we're going to go up to north this week and we're going to have a look at Alex Loughton and see he, how he goes in the 24 second shot challenge. Now, PC, uh, Alex Loughton, nine points of not a bad shooting performance, but what is it with the throwback machine? Oh, it's the poor man's rebounder. You know, you've got to get, get the guys under there. Get your point guard under there, whipping it back to you, putting it in the shot pocket. So, yeah, stupid, Al. Yeah, not a, not a, uh, a smart move, Al. But good to get nine using the machine uh, is an honourable mention, but, uh, yeah, but not a, good enough. He's a good shooter, but not as good as Darren. PC. My favourite part of the It Goes Off program, it's called the Mark Zuckerberg Minute. And it's where we get the feedback from the people out there. We let them join in the conversation. They can hit the Facebook page, NBL Facebook page, or they can hit my Twitter, Andrew Gage 10 Or do you, are you involved in the Twitter action? No, I've uh, stayed clear of the Twitter. Oh, need to get on. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll get on. Please, get on, and we'll let you know what uh, PC's Twitter is. But hit us with your question, and each week we give away a Spalding Game Ball to the best prize. And you're actually going to, to the best question, you're, you're the, going to be the judge of that today. Okay. The Spalding Game Ball, it is a ripping product, isn't it? Yeah, these are great. These, uh, these are really good. You were, uh, you were in love with it on uh, Sunday against the Tigers, that's yeah. for sure. Yep. So a uh, Spalding Ball is going to go to our, the person who, who, uh, who PC deems has asked the best question off the Facebook or the Twitter. And we start off with Cam Bruce. And Cam Bruce, if you had to pick one player to hit a game-winning shot, which current player would you choose and why, PC? If I had to choose any player? Outside of yourself, because you would be probably the choice of the Townsville Crocs, but uh, I don't know you're probably too humble to say yourself, but you would be in my top five. There's no doubt about that, but who else? Um, th th there would be a few. I'll, I'll give you Kevin Lish. He's hit a couple yes. of big game winners. Yes. Um, you know, uh, probably Harves from uh, Gold Coast. James Harvey, the veteran, he's got experience on his side. And, uh, you know, I'd, I'd throw Ed Gill in there as well from, from the Crocs. He I is. He, he, he can make a game winner. He's not scared to step up to the plate. And it's those guys that want the ball down the stretch. And sometimes they be guys that haven't done anything the whole game. Yeah. Just in the crisis, you just get that feeling that they can step up. A a another one that, uh, that's also out there is Jamal Wilson. I, I, he senses to me as the guy that you, he wants the ball in his hands. Yeah, he seems to be able to get his shot off no matter what. Mm. And, uh, you know, he's pretty crafty. So, yeah. Not a bad question, Cam. Now, Brad Teapots Kelly is his name. I don't know whether Teapots is actually his uh, real name, but good <laughs> on you, Brad Kelly. Should Peter Crawford be in the Boomers team at next year's Olympics going by his current form? Should PC be there, PC? Uh, I'm, I'm going down the same line of questioning, uh, you know, all the time. And, uh, you know, you've you got to have a good NBL season and, and being in form in the NBL season and, and making sure your team's winning and, you, and you're there at the end of the year in the playoffs. Uh, you know, that's what I'm concentrating on and just going from there. So, but don't you uh, have something to do with who makes the squad, no, buddy? No. Sure. Well, I have nothing to do with it, but there's no doubt I think that you're right on the cusp because at the Olympic Games, you need those guys that can come in and give you instant offense. With the defenses, the way it can get in the uh, uh, in an international game, it can become a bit of a slugfest. And those guys like yourself that can come out and blaze away, similar to James Harvey. I thought James Harvey, if we go back uh, four years into 2008 Olympics, I thought he was one that they that should have been there. So you're going to be right there. You've got guys like Joe Ingalls, Brad Newley, 
uh, ahead of you. Who, who do you see as your main competition for a spot? Um, well, I, I think, uh, you know, that there's seven or eight that are solid in that, mm. in that first seven or eight. And, mm. uh, you know, obviously, Newley and Joe are going to start. Uh, I think that last spot's up for grabs. Mm. You know, uh, Gibbo, Damo, there's not too many guys coming out of the NBL. Uh, so I think you gotta, you got to be informed mm. to make the squad and then uh, you narrow it down from there. But, uh, you know, you, you don't know until they name the squad. No, that's, you, that's the tough part. You don't, and there's still a long way to go. I'm sure you're going to be yeah. well and truly in the mix. And one thing you do bring to the table is that uh, not only can you knock it down, you can get out there and play some defence. So... Uh, you're, you're right up there with a chance. Stuart Johnston, is there anything the Wollongong Hawks can do to their roster at this stage in the season to turn things around? If not, what about before the next season? Who would stay? Who should go? Now, that's a tough one for you, PC, but just the first part of the question, really, is there anything they do? They've got their two imports. They're probably the only real changes they can make. Javon Catron, he's been good. Sharon Glover uh, hasn't had a lot of playing time. But is there anything that they can do that you see at this stage of the season? Um, I mean, the the strength of the Hawks last year was their, their import mm. at, at the point he won MVP of the league. And, mm. uh, you know, when he wasn't playing well, they went on a big Gary losing Irvin, streak. Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think... You know, some teams Not just much. need that guy, you mm. know, and, uh, you know, if they had him again this year, they'd probably be a bit different. But, uh, you know, Reese Martin's... Uh, Stepped up, I thought. Yeah, he, he can... He's definitely an NBL player mm. right now, and, uh, you know, maybe he needs a year where he can feel the mm. league out, and, uh, you know, he'll be better for it next mm. year, and they can bring an import in, in uh, you know, a different position. Well, the last one. last one we'll go with is Brad Pike. Who is the best point guard in the NBL so far this season? Now, we've got a long way to go and things can change, but at this point in time... Yeah, it's the... Um, well, the anyone? record speaks for themselves. Uh, New Zealand's point guard, Cedric Spot Jackson, um, you know, he's, uh, he's had big games when they need him. Mm. Uh, he's um, had big assist games, mm. big scoring games, big steal games. So, uh, you know, he's done it all. So. And I actually agree with you, but I'll give an honourable mention to Jamar Wilson as well, who's, yeah. been, uh, who's been very good. Yes, and uh, PC, uh, it's now come to... It's on you on who is going to pick up the sporting game ball for the best question. Who do you who do you like out of Well, I wish I could give four balls away, Drew, but there is only one. Um, Honourable mention to Brad Teapots Kelly. Great yes. question, mate. Bad um, piece of making the Olympics. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but no, let's give it to uh, Cameron Bruce. Right, yeah. Good choice. Cameron Bruce, you stand by because uh, a sporting game ball is going to be coming your way. And uh, if we're quick enough, we might actually get it out there for Chrissy, which would be fantastic. Great work by you, PC. PC, it's getting to that very, very important stage. In fact, we're almost at the halfway point, Christmas period. Uh, we're coming up to round 12. Can you talk us through all the games coming up this weekend? This weekend, uh, Friday night, uh, Perth playing New Zealand. That'll be a good one. That yes. challenge, yeah, yes. that's, a good, that's, that's a good challenge for yeah. New Zealand. <laughs> uh, the Tigers are playing the Taipans uh, at the cage on Friday night. That'll good. be a good game as well. Uh, Sydney versus Townsville. We're on the road down in Sydney, so uh, we'll give them a whooping. And uh, Friday, Gold Coast versus Adelaide. Um, so there's four games on Friday night just before Christmas. Lots of basketball. Uh, I'd tip Gold Coast to win that one at home. And uh, your game again on Friday night, the Sydney Kings taking on the Townsville Crocs. That's going to be on one as well. So awesome. tune into that game. PC, what a performance by you here today. We Just fantastic coming on. Great to get your thoughts on all the goings on. And to everyone out there, we want to send out a Christmas cheer. Uh, okay. We want to say Merry Christmas to all the Hoop fans out there. We're going to take a spell next week. We're not going to be back, but uh, so we'll be oh. back in two weeks. So all the best for Christmas and the new year. Great to have you on board. Before we go, we must pay homage to those that look after us. And it all starts with the naming rights sponsor of the NBL, and it's iNet. Hi, iNet. Connect better. One. <laughs> Cenovet. And one. Sporting. Rent Smart. And Virgin Australia. And end. Don't <laughs> Virgin <laughs> Australia do a terrific <laughs> job. Uh, it's not in just yet. We're almost there. A little bit left. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to everyone. Good luck for the remainder of the season for yourself personally and the Townsville Crocs. It's been fantastic. We won't be here next week, but tune in in two weeks' time when we come back for the number one NBL podcast in the world. 
and it's called It Goes, goes off. off. What is that? You wanna do that again? Terrible. <laughs> it goes <laughs> off. <laughs> gotta do it. It's so. an audio thing. It's an audio. It's an audio. <laughs> we ready? I thought it was just Drew's routine. <laughs> like a free coach. <laughs> That's it.